I think the holidays today are really about capitalists trying to sort of finish the year out with a bang. So this year, I'd like to really go back to those early Christmases and celebrate new life. And how do we even get new life? Sex. And so, today I present to you, Triple X Men. Today on the show, we have special guest Rob Chamberlain, artist, part-time model, and sex maniac. So as we decorate the tree, I just want to talk about something. And it might be stressful for some of you, so I'm going to go ahead and recommend you sit down for this. Okay? We're going to be talking about feminism. So, like I said, I'm sitting down, and I, and I suggest you do too. I went ahead and chose, I chose this fur, which is actually um, the scalps of many old white men. And obviously that's ideal. And that's, this is really a feminist approach to sitting, is to sit on uh, scalps of dead white men. So it's really, it actually feels really good too. This is surprisingly soft. I always thought from their hair texture that um, old white men's hair was actually really gross. Um, I think this may have been treated though. So um, I'm not necessarily recommending you touch old white men's hair, but um, if you want to, I think you should just go out and grab it. I feel like they have enough privilege already that they're really ready to experience what it's like to have someone just, you know, go for it, just touch it. Cause you're probably worth it. What does it mean to have a feminist Christmas? What does it mean to be a feminist? So there's a lot of waves of feminism. And I know it really sounds like there's a lot of motion in the ocean, but it's very simple. But let's uh, let's break it down really quickly what the waves are. We have our first wave, and we th this is in Western culture, to clarify. These waves are Western. The tsunami of feminism that's coming is not gonna come from the West, so prepare yourself. So the first wave of sort of Western feminism we see is namely the suffragette movement. And this is a movement that's literally to get on paper voting and land ownership rights. Basically, women want to say, hey, I can own property and I can vote. And as we probably know, this is really about white women. Second wave feminism is born namely out of the 60s where we have identity politics coming out. And actually feminists invented the word identity politics, which is kind of cool. They also invented one of my favorite phrases, which is the personal is the political. So that's another cool thing. Thank you, second wave feminists. Second wave feminists do have a couple problems though. First of all, they also tend to mostly be white women and they also tend to be focused on women. And that's not to say feminism isn't about women, but, but it's actually not. It's about everybody. So that's a shocker for a lot of people that third wave feminism really has for us. So hold on to your seats. And so we have third wave feminism, which thinks a lot about postmodernism and postcolonialist theory and includes a lot more women of all kinds, maybe women who were born as men, maybe men who are still men, maybe men who were born as women, maybe people who weren't born. And all these people come together and they're like, hey, you know, this is all really messed up and we're gonna try and fix this. We're gonna have more equality for more people. We're gonna get queer people involved and it's gonna be awesome. So third wave feminism, it's really cool. One way to celebrate third wave feminism on your Christmas tree, and this is my favorite thing to do every year at Christmas, is to hang up, cut up men and hang them on your tree. This both recognizes the second wave feminists and the third wave feminists. Why? Because it's hilarious and clearly a weird thing to do that only a third wave postmodern feminist would do. But also second wave feminists invented the idea of cutting up men. Awesome right? So as much as like physically cutting up actual men is really difficult, one thing I've did, and you'll see in the background, is uh, I went ahead and I cut out nipples. And since we're on TV, we can actually only show male nipples, which works really well with this project. By the way, free the nipple. So um, since we can only show male nipples, really makes sense. And since we're talking about cutting up men, this is the perfect project. Well, we're going to use eggs because we're celebrating the birth of Jesus. First of all, we have to blow them out. 
So as you can see, this is a little weird, but we're gonna go ahead and take a push pin and put a hole in each end of the egg, kind of carefully. Sometimes you just maybe wanna make two close ones next to each other so you get a little bigger hole, and that makes it easier. You're gonna go ahead and put your lips over one hole and blow. I know, bringing the sexy back to Christmas, right? Really hot. Once you've blown out the egg, I'd recommend giving it a rinse off. And then I take a, a little droplet of hot glue and glue a little loop of string to the egg so we can hang it up. Since I used porn magazines, I won't show this, but um, I went ahead and cut out a bunch of nipples of, in this case, men. In your home, you could have gender equality, or maybe you just like women. Uh, maybe you're in a women's separatist colony. More power to you. In this case, we just use male nipples. Again, we're here to cut up men. So we cut out the nipples in pretty star shapes. And I went ahead and used some, I used in this case Mod Podge and my fingers. If you don't want to get messy, go ahead and use, you could wear gloves or you could also use a brush. Um, Elmer's glue will work just as well. Really anything. Off-brand Elmer's glue would even, probably even work better, honestly. When you're done, you can go ahead and take a chance to apply glitter, which I obviously recommend. And go ahead and hang it on your tree, in your home, on other people's trees. Preferably without permission, they'll find it as a nice surprise later. T for two. Rob's is too hot, so I'll be the only person drinking tea. So what is Christmas about? Christmas is about buying things for people and a little baby in a manger. It used to be about a baby in a manger, apparently. Yeah? And before that, it used to be about deities that we're no longer allowed to talk about. What's your favorite part of Christmas? Well, my favorite part of Christmas growing up, when I was like in junior high school, my mom and I would co-collaborate on designing amazing pairs of pants for me to wear to church for the Christmas Eve service. The first pair being these amazing, like really wide leg, like mall rat kind of pant that were cow print. What mall rat has cow print pants? One whose mother loves them enough to, like, make them whatever they wanted. Like, I want a cow print pant. I want a lime, neon green, maybe see-through. Also, crazy wide leg pair of pants with a cross on the butt. Like, who doesn't what? want... What? Who doesn't want to show their religious fervor with their fashion? I don't know. The thing is, is that my whole church got, like, behind this in a really creepy way that, like, people anticipated these bizarre outfits. Some of them still don't know that I'm gay. Oh. Have you ever kissed under the mistletoe? No. Let me put this tea down. Tea for two. Mm. What are you getting your mom for Christmas this year? So, a couple of years ago, my parents and our family decided that we were not going to give gifts anymore. But yeah, the kind of our goal as a family is to spend that money on getting to be with each other. So if it's buying a plane ticket or like spending the money on gas to get to our family, it's kind of more important that we're together instead of shipping each other presents. We usually do like small stocking stuffers, which usually end up being really funny, kind of like white elephant gifts. New stockings. We're leveling up from basic this year. Names are embroidered. Oh. Not just painted. My family actually has had embroidered um, stockings for years. <laughs> I really appreciate underwear as a present. Good to know. Do you have any holiday underwears? I do. I've always been preparing for a Hanukkah no pants party, which maybe I'm throwing this year. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about Santa's sex life? I've actually done a surprising bit of contemplation into Mr. Claus's bedroom activity. And I think it's substantial. Really? No one is that jolly without sex. I'm just curious about holiday crimes. I've heard a lot about people stealing to get presents. I'm just, I'm curious if you've ever committed a crime related to the holidays. You know, I've never committed a holiday crime, but I've seen a lot of holiday crimes being committed. Mostly fashion crimes, mostly committed by white women. Hey.
anus rhymes with anus. Whoa!